All right. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Impact Wrestling finally making their debut on Access TV. We're going to give a little quick review on this Wednesday Night's War Week 5 and also NWA and much other things. So get yourself some popcorn and a soda and welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zone. Pop. Are you ready? Nico, hmm. did you see the latest NWA Power? Oh, yeah. It was great. Oh, Not yeah. to mention. The one thing is still going crazy is that we got people that want a piece of all this. No. You hit, we have Eli Drake. We have James Storm. What's causing all this? I think the problem is Eli Drake believes that he's dunking him. Yeah. And he's dunking uh, James Storm. Because Nick Aldis, I I feel like Nick a ducking. How come he didn't? Even, he wasn't in that that uh, six man tag. He stirred up all that shit and then disappeared. Who? Uh, Eli Drake. Well, he wasn't involved. I think he uh. was. He. It's kind of like if you follow I Impact Wrestling in the past. Mm. They had this thing with the X Division where you cash it in, you get a chance of the world title. Yeah. It's not the national heavyweight title. It's the same thing. Right. So, basically, Eli is on the side of James Storm. He's okay. saying, look, you and I, we have an opportunity to get the title. But it's you who has that title that is the reason should get a title shot. Right. So, basically, Nick Aldis is starting to see, okay, maybe Eli Drake is right. But he doesn't feel James Storm has what it takes to be champion. Mm. So, he gave him an opportunity. He said this. They're going to do that teaming where all this takes Cole Cabana, and if his team wins, yeah. Cole Cabana will get another shot of the title, of the national heavyweight title. Ah. But if Storms went, he gets a title shot with all this. But Nick Aldis gave the stipulation. Hmm. He, has he has to vindicate the title. Meaning he has to drop it. You mean vacate it? You vacate it, yeah. Okay. Vacate the title in order to get that. Yeah. So basically, James Storm realized he has nothing. He has everything to lose, but he has no other choice. Uh -huh. So we'll get to that to that match in a bit. So later day started with Trevor Murdoch versus Josephus. Now, as you all recall, Josephus kept throwing white powder at people. <laughs> He was being told he will be suspended, but Trevor Murdoch, yeah. being Trevor, yeah. feels like, no, he needs an ass whooping. Yeah. Which he got. Yeah. If you guys didn't see, there was a part where the referee did not see this. He was about to pull out the powder. Right. But Trevor Murdoch saw that a mile away. He knew he was going to throw it, so he kicked it back. Mm hmm And he, he powdered himself. But that's, that's not the best part. You can hear the comments. are like, whoa, whoa. Like, yeah. He's got it right there. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was so funny to see. It was on point. <laughs> but, yeah, and, of course, Trevor Murdoch took the win on this one. I'm, like, thinking, how long can they breathe with that powder right. going around? How long is it going to take to clean the mess I'm up? I'm fan that out of there. But it was a great match. You know, I mean, Joseph has got... It was a fun Joseph, match to watch. Joseph has got exactly what he want, deserved. You know, powdering Ugh. everyone. He got that from himself. I think we see the next Aaron Stevens being Aaron Stevens again. Oh, this Do not look at me, but here comes Ricky Stark. <laughs> and he bitch slapped him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And he, t and he tells, you talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. You never shut up. <laughs> I think for Ricky, is like saying this, just shut up, get in the ring. I think he did that for uh, Matthew, the botch guy. Yes. And then... um we jump in with I think the it was a tag team it was the Dawson's versus Kingston and Homicide. Now this was this match near the end was yeah. total weird. We saw the wild cards, the current yeah. cha tag team champions. 
they were attacking both sides, but the Dawsons took the win. You know, I'm telling you, like in almost every promotion right now, the tag team division is where it's at. Like they're bring, they're 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 bringing it. Like they're really bringing it. Like it's oh, yeah. it's getting more epic. They're making the 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 championship more uh, mean mean more. Like how they're showing like these angles and like yeah. like who wants to do what. So I I I just hope we can see more. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do with this yeah. tag team division they have. You know, I mean, we've seen that now with AEW how they're doing. Same thing with WWE, but we but mostly I've been focusing on AEW's tag team. Mm-hmm. But end of it, I would like to see what interesting direction they're gonna go with. Yeah. Then we got jump in with the women a women's match. Yeah. We had the current women's champion, uh, Allison K. She is trying to determine who has the capability to take her out. Yeah. So we saw the match between Marty Bell and El- Ashley Vox. Uh-huh. And we saw the winner was Ashley Vox. Yeah. But you saw who showed up at the end. Thunder Rosa. I like that one. I don't know what Thunder Rosa's angle is. She just showed up like looks like she's extending an invitation to Marty Bell. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if they're planning to form a team or a stable faction of their own, which is unusual. Right. But we'll see what's going to go down with this. And then we got the continuation between Aaron Stevens and Ricky Starks. Mm-hmm. Of course, who can forget he got bitch slapped. Did you see that he was trying to do the same thing during the match? Yeah. He tried to... <laughs> Then he just ducked down. Yeah. I think he just fell for it, you know, thinking he was dumb enough to let his guard down. Yeah. Which was a fun match. You know, I think Fire and Zivis should have just shut up. Mm-hmm. But Ricky Starks took uh, the the victory on this one. He got into his head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But the main event was, of course, the match between James Storm teaming with the Wild Cards, the mm-hmm. current tag team champions. Versus Aldis, Colcabana, and Mr. Anderson. Which was a good match to see. You know, because the thing is, we saw the stipulation. If Aldis wins, Colcabana gets another shot of the national heavyweight title. But if Storm wins, he gets a title shot for the 10 pounds of gold, but he has to vacate the national heavyweight title. Mm. So basically, everything's on the line. So it was a great match. And of course, the victory goes to Team Aldis. And now we get to see Colt get his shot for the National Heavyweight title. Now, you may have heard this now. Their latest pay-per-view has sold out. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. You know, I'm like, still can't believe that we're like maybe, what, a month away? Mm. from it oh yeah we're like a month away from the pay-per-view <coughs> but it's sold out real quick so i'm excited to see their first pay-per-view which is titled into the fire into which the fire. into the fire <laughs> ding ding i'm falling which is a good title sauce but we just gotta see what's gonna happen. We hope we can see good matches on this one. Most definitely. But we will continue to follow up on NWA. So let's move along with the show. All right, Nico. Mm-hmm. We just finished and entered with week five on the Wednesday Night War mm-hmm. between NXT and AEW. So let's start with NXT. Yes. We know how it started. Let's just fast forward. It was with a musical performance by Poppy. Don't uh, know who they are. I never heard of their music. No, not really. And then they started out with Io Shirai versus Candice LeRae, mm-hmm. which was another storyline fight between the two who would get their chance for the women's title of NXT. And, of course, we saw who won that match, mm-hmm. Io Shirai, and then she tried to take out Candice, and here comes Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. Saving the day, as always. Then the next thing we saw was Finn Balor giving his explanation about what happened last week, why he did it. I can see like the story. Maybe he's getting sick and tired of Johnny getting all the attention. Oh yeah. Because if you recall, he was the the one that made NXT what it is oh, during his time, and he feels threatened that 
someone's taking a spot. And of course, if you recall last episode, you weren't here for that one. Mm. Well, you were somewhere else and I was here. He pulled out the guns. Mm -hmm. We don't know for sure if this is going to be a new type of version of Bullet Club because I doubt they're going to use that club again. No. You know, but we'll just have to wait and see. And I did mention um, Finn Balor had on um, behind the scenes, Finn Balor has two guys. Uh, from the Raw roster that he is eyeing to bring in into a new faction. We, uh, if you guys want to know who that is, that's the Author of Pain. Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain. But we don't know for sure exactly how this is going to go, but we're dying to see this. Oh, yeah. If you guys are big fans of Finn Balor, you know his history from Japan with the stable faction he was in. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't, get your asses on the New Japan World and watch it. He's seen it. i seen it. Bullet Club is real. <laughs> and then uh, we go with Br uh, Bronson Reed versus Shane Thorne. Well, it was a good match. Especially what I like when Bronson just pushed uh, Shane down mm. really hard with the win. But I think the next m match was the best one. Oh, yeah. The Kabuki Warriors versus Tegan and Dakota. Mm -hmm. It was... By far one of the best matches of the night. Heel Kyrie Zane is the most adorable thing I've seen in a while. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm excited for that, you know. Yes. It was a great match seeing it, going back and forth, you know, like, like you can see the Kabuki Wars having much of the control of the match. Oh, yeah. And then they jump back and forth with this. But, of course, the victory goes to Kabuki Warriors thanks to Asuka's Green Mist. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what was it? Bushi did the, the, what's it called? Roundhouse kick to the head to a uh, mm -hmm. to green miss to Kyrie's uh, insane elbow. That was a nice little uh, yeah, little thing right there. But it wasn't over just yet. Even though Teague, uh, Tegan and Dakota did not win, <coughs> they were being stalked by the horsewomen of MMA. Mm -hmm. Reason behind that is Shayna Baszler will not allow, have competition in her wake. Oh, right. So she wants to take out Tegan Knox before she gets to her. But luckily, Rhea Ripley showed up. Out of nowhere, here comes Io Shirai and Bianca Belair, mm -hmm. who feel like Rhea Ripley has no right to challenge um, Shayna Baszler because they felt like she had her chance. Like, she's wrong. Gotta, she's got to get the back of the line. That's how they feel. Yeah, but the, the problem is this. They both tapped out in the hands of Shayna Baszler. Yeah. Ripley did not. Yeah. So in the interest of fairness, she still gets another shot. Regardless of what uh, Io Shirai and Bianca Blair think. Mm. And Candles Array, I feel like she agrees with Rhea Ripley. Because it's more like why she's been saving her the entire time. Mm. Does she see that she's the one who has much of the advantage to take on Shayna Baszler? Yeah, Who's going to be with the the horsewoman in the war games, though? That's the problem. Unless, this I don't know exactly how it is. This is how it goes. Both sides were fine. You see Tegan, Dakota, uh, Candace, and Ripley on, on one side trying to take out the all three horsewomen, mm -hmm. Io Shirai, and, she, and Bianca Belair. And here comes Regal, who kind of agrees with Ripley. Yes. So it's more like... Let's do this interesting. The first ever war games for all the women. Right. This is something that hasn't done yet. I mean, history is being made oh, yes. in this. So I'm excited to see how this one goes out. But like you said, there's five of the people who we saw on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. We don't know who's going to be doing this. We don't know if if it's going to be the um, the other two. Mm. Or should I say the, the guinea pigs of Shayna? And Ayo Shirai and, and Bianca Bella, we don't know yet how it's going to be played out. Or right. unless Ripley gets someone on her side. Hmm. That, that either, it could go either way. We just got to keep an eye on it very carefully. So I'm sure we're going to see that on the upcoming NXT show that comes up. Then we got, of course, Cameron Grimes versus Tyler Bate. I like that match. It was pretty nice. Not to mention, you know, Tyler Bate, we all know him as the first ever NXT uh, world champion. And I, I was 
I haven't seen much of him, you know, because I know there was a segment that he was in with Pete Dunne and another guy. I think he's also their youngest athlete on the roster. Oh, yeah. it, it, he's, like, amazing the way he is. But, of course, we saw who showed up out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Killian Dane. Causing the interference because right now, Killian Dane has been making headways against Pete Dunne, and I think he's trying to get his attention mm. by attacking Tyler Bate. And that, in the result of that, Cameron took advantage of that and gave him that, uh, what was it they call it? His uh, finisher? Yeah. Oh, I don't even know. We'll, we'll figure it out once we go there. And then they finally ended with, you call them the Red Dragon? Mm, I still call him Red he Dragon. He still calls him. <laughs> uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed versus mm -hmm. Keith Lee and Matt Riddle. Now, that was a good team because if you guys don't know, yeah. Those two, Red, Riddle and, and Lee, they go way back. Oh, yeah. You know, they're good friends. They work, you can see, like, Keith Lee is the more of the powerhouse. Yeah. And Matt Riddle more of the striker type. Mm hmm So it's like a good combination of those, you know. I like how they were going back and forth with, like, you can see Keith Lee's, like, wasting his energy. He's like, he can trust Matt if he knows how to, to handle the situation. Right. So Matt will make the decision saying, okay, I can't do it no more. It's your turn. Mm -hmm. So that was a good how they can think alike. Even though those who haven't seen those two in the independent scenes, they can read each other's minds. Ah. Because they actually face each other before or they teamed up before. Mm -hmm. So however you've seen them in the past. And of course, as usual with the Undisputed Era. Strong and Cole showed up, mm. causing another fiasco. But, of course, they attacked Lee and Riddle. I don't know where here comes Ciampa. As always, his psychological head is on Goldie. Yeah. But he decided to put Goldie on hold for a while and focus more on his war against the Undisputed, Undisputed Era. Era. So, basically, people are saying they would like to see... Champa, Riddle and Lee te team up. In a war games? Possibly, yeah. Ooh. But so it'd be a Gargano, Champa. Well, I don't Lee, know if Gargano and, uh, is going to be in it because. The thing oh yeah, he's going to deal with uh, with Finn Balor. Finn Balor. So I'm a but I can see one person that could join them. That person that's on my mind right Pete now. Dunn? Nope. Yeah. Valvetin Dream. The Dream. The dream. He still has unfinished business with yes. Roderick Strong. Oh, shit. So, okay. I would like to see that. Almost definitely. So, we just got to wait and see what's going to happen this coming NXT episode. Because we know the last time we saw Velveteen Dream, he was taken out by Roderick yeah, Strong. jumped the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was a good show. I have to say, like, my favorite matches of the night of NXT was mm -hmm. the the women's tag team match. Hands down. And, of course, second to that is the match between the Undisputed Era of uh, Fish and O'Reilly versus Keith Lee and Matt Riddle. Those were, like, two of my favorite ones of the night. Uh -huh, yeah. of the night. Now let's jump in with AEW Dynamite. Mm. It started out Hangman Page versus Sammy Guevara. Oh, yeah, that did happen. Yeah. It was pretty interesting. Like, you can tell Hangman wanted to put Sammy in his place. Oh, yeah. Because if you follow Sammy, he's the cocky one. Mm hmm You know, claim, he is the self-proclaimed best ever. And, of course, he wasn't the <laughs> best at all to Hangman. So it was, it was a great match. You can see certain things that were going on. Like, Sammy got hurt in the apron, like, ran the edge. It was like, he was trying to... Sammy did try to counter the the buckshot. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that was a nice the nice little spot right there. Yeah, but awesome. of course he got the him he got him on the buckshot and the dead eye. Mm -hmm. And of course after the match with Sammy, he made his tensions known that he wants Pack at full gear. Mm -hmm. So it's still no I, I don't know if it's gonna happen or if it is between those two. Because I know Pac doesn't want no piece of him at all. Like saying, I already beat you once. I don't need to do it again. Right. So we just got to win and see on the upcoming uh, Dynamite episode. And then we have, of course, Hikaru Shida making her oh, yeah. return after All Out versus another wrestler I never heard of, but she impressed me too. 
Her name is Shauna. Now, Shana. you probably ask yourselves, where the hell was Hikara Shida? A service says she was getting her last few shows done in Japan mm -hmm. because she just officially moved here to the States. That is correct. She has an apartment and a credit card account. We just don't know where she lives, and I don't think we want to know. Right. But what do you think of this match between Hikaru Shida and Shana? Um, I like both of them. Like, as I was watching the match, I was like, like I already, I already liked uh, Hikaru. Uh, she was like, to, for me, I thought she was going to be like the top, the top one coming in. I really didn't like see uh, uh, Rio being their their top one, but um, I I like I like the match. I also like. Uh, how you pronounce it, Shana? Yeah. Um, right after the match, I was like, "Yep, I'm following her on Twitter." Boom. <laughs> yeah. I have to say that uh, I don't know if they have Shana as just a someone they just hired for the mm. day, but I would definitely like to see her more in um, in AEW because I know oh, yeah. they're still trying to fill up the roster. Mm -hmm. You know, and I say Shana hands down deserves to be with AEW. Oh yeah. You know, and of course the victory goes to Hikaru Shida. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know there's many of us are saying she was close of winning the match against Rio before the having the AEW Women's Championship match. Yeah. But we all do have our hopes that maybe one day we can see her with that title. Oh, yeah. So we just got to wait and see when that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the matter if, it's when. When. Now, the next thing we see, of course, was legendary tag team, the Rock and Roll Express. Mm. Presenting the tag team championship titles, and of course the party was crashed. None other by Inner Circles, Santana and Ortiz, proud and powerful. You know they are trying to prove that they are the best tag team. If you saw, uh, one of them had the titles. Like looked like they wanted to steal them, but I yeah. think in the right. Uh, I don't know which one is it. In their minds, like no, we're not taking those. Mm -hmm. I think their primary goal is to prove that they are the best yes. by taking out the team that are claiming they are the best tag team. Oh, yeah. And once they take them out, they probably can focus on the titles. Mm. So I think that's the angle they're playing. If you're going to be the best, you must destroy the best. Yeah. If you so, want to be the man, you got to beat the man. Yeah. So that there's that. And then we see after that, the best friends and pockets ah. teaming up against um, QT and those two jo uh, jobbers that got their butts handed by mm. Ortiz and Santana. <laughs> of course, Pockets being Pockets as always. Mm. You know, I'm like, I, I just enjoy it. You saw how they came out in Halloween. Mm. You know, you see they were dressed up in characters from Ricky and Morty. Is that the one? The show? Oh, yeah. The, you're talking about Rick, uh, Rick and Morty. Yeah. That. yeah. So... Um, the thing about, uh, about, uh, Pockets, I'm gonna take what I said about him before and change it now. I wanna go to the other side. I'm going to the other side of the team now. I get it now. I get it. He, like, after I saw him do that dive against the Elite, I was like, alright, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm with the team. I'm with the team now. I'm Team Pockets now. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the victory goes to... The best friends and pockets. Yeah. Then we moved on to the contract signing between Cody and Jericho. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jericho always had A's up his sleeve. Yeah. He had Hagar, his muscle, take out Dustin Rhodes. Ah. Uh, right in the parking lot and slamming his head down at the limo. Mm. You saw the dent, did you? The dent? There's no. a dent on the limo on oh. the backside. I was like, dang, that must have hurt. But wow, and then he took him out with slamming the the door on his arm, mm. which was so brutal. And of course, we know what Cody is thinking. He wants revenge. All right. So and then we, we moved on to the match, the Elite versus Kip Sabian, teaming with Hybrid 2. Mm -hmm. Kip Sabian thinks that he should be the Elite, like he should be the one taking their spots. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Besides... There's only one Kenny Omega, yeah. and there will never be another Kenny. Kip can try, but yeah. he'll never be. I mean, 
If there's a, a a scene where he tried to do the, the Rise of the Terminator, Kip Sabian. Yeah, I saw that. That did not work. No, nah, no, nah, they mowed him they down. They just power slammed them down on the mm. on the edge of their apron. I'm like, well, that's what you get for copying Kenny. And every time I hear the name Kip Sabian, I keep thinking Chris Sabian, and I'm just no. like, no, uh, Kip Sabian. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he's a uh, British wrestler. He yeah. was trained by the Knight family. Uh, if you guys don't know who Knight family are. That's Paige's family. Yeah. So I'm sure they're very proud of their boy. Mm-hmm. And of course, the victory turns into the elite, as always. Mm-hmm. But proud and powerful strike again. Oh, yeah. They, did do that. they attack the Bucks at this time. Basically making their point that they are the best. And then finally, I think it ends... No. Forgot. Here comes Peter Avalon being Peter Avalon. But... Moxley shows up, gives them the paradigm shift. Mm-hmm. Of course, Moxley is not too pleased of Tony Khan's decision. Right. Where they're going to make his match with Kenny a lights-out match, uh. a non-section match, which, if you guys recall, wins and losses matter. Right. But the unsanctioned matches don't count. But Moxley gave a warning to Con- Tony saying, that whatever happens to Kenny, that's on him. Oh. This will be exciting. Oh, yeah. So it's because Tony did say, you are the purveyor, uh, the purveyor of violence or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, But we just got to see what's going to happen for this Wednesday before we head out to full gear. Mm-hmm. And then finally we ended with who's going to win and become the first ever AEW Tag Team Champion. Oh, I woke right up for this one. I was yeah, like... and not to mention, refereeing the match is, I did not expect, but I'm glad they put her, mm-hmm. Aubrey Edwards. Ooh. She's now becoming known with this thing, you know. Oh, yeah. She became the first woman to main event mm-hmm. the on a All Out for the World Heavyweight title. You gotta have Girl Hebner in there, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, but it was a great match, you know, because... If you guys are not fans of tag teams, like that's what makes tag team wrestling great, because you don't know who's gonna win it, right? Or who's gonna try to stop the pin or the submission. Mm-hmm. So that's one of those matches we like about this. And of course, Matt Jackson did say they're gonna bring the best tag teams in the world and give the best tag team show they can give for the fans, and they weren't wrong. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts about this match? Um, I honestly, I could have cared who, I could have cared less who won because I like both teams equally. Same here. Um, my thing was like, I thought Private Party was going to go over all the way ever since they made like the deal to sign with them. But after that went out, I was like, okay, well now I want anyone to win, honestly. (laughs) Well, I think Private Party has made made it for themselves. Yeah. But I think they want to give, um, them much of a much bigger notice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like saying, yes, they lost the tournament, mm. but they still can make a name for themselves. Right. You know, they can go for another title hunt. Oh, yeah, easily. In the future, you know. Like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's the matter of when. when. So, but if you heard this on social media, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to reveal the, win- the winners of this. It became SCU. Mm-hmm. There are people saying that, that the Lucha Bros were robbed. No. The thing is this, like, I was rooting for both teams. Yeah. I'm a fan of those they both teams. Had, they both had records. And I know we've seen fans that are on the Lucha Brothers side. We've seen fans with the SCU. But there yeah. are fans like me and Nico. We're yeah. both fans of both yeah. teams. It's not like they didn't get jobbed out like Kofi Kingston. No. <laughs> no. I thing is, like, people are saying, okay, we see, is this the same kind of thing we've seen now with Jericho? I was like, I don't know. Just yet. Mm. Because we know Jericho's an experienced uh, wrestler, you know. Same yeah. thing with SCU. Yeah. So we just got to win and see how they're going to play this one out oh, yeah. on both sides. Easy. But we do know we will see maybe Lucha Buzz get go on a, on a title hunt. Like I said again, it's not if, it's when. It's definitely. Now, let's jump end it with how the viewers came in. Now, just to let you guys know... We had the World Series. Oh, and it's yeah. not their fault. Who won the World Series? 
the Nationals. Oh yeah, that's right. They did do that. So is that the, is that the World Series fault that the ratings didn't turn out on both ways? But just to let you guys know, the one who had the most views mm-hmm. was the AEW with the views of seven hundred fifty nine thousand. As mm-hmm. for NXT. Five hundred and eighty-six thousand, which is not bad. I mean, you can say AEW took night on this one. So you probably ask me, well, how can NXT fix it? Don't ask me. Tell yeah. Triple H, because yeah. if because if I was Triple H, I would pay attention what they're doing right. Mm-hmm. So right now we just finished with week five on this one. We just got to see how week six. Now the World Series is done. Yeah. It's another day. We just got to see who will actually make the biggest uh, impact on the on the Wednesday Night War for this one. So that's it for t- this one. So let's get ready to start with week six next week. You know what else happened on Wednesday? What? Dirty Ron became double champion. Oh, yeah. All right. Nico. What is up? You know this past Tuesday was the debut of Impact Wrestling on Access TV. No, nah, I didn't know that. So they did. Okay. As you now know, the parent company that owns Impact Wrestling owns Access TV. Uh, I do know that. So le- let me explain what happened on the first day. What first happened? match started with legend Japanese wrestler now Naomichi Matafuji. Mm. You may know him from Pro Wrestling Noah. He faced on one half of the tag team champions, the North, Josh Alexander, which was a little shocking because normally with the North, they're more of a tag team. You don't see hardly those two guys eating the way in single competition. Right. But it was a great match. You know, they were throwing every move they can. I know that Josh Alexander did his homework. He figured out every move uh, Mata Fuji was going to do. But it was great. There were some nice counters going on. Oh, there. yeah. And great... Uh, strikes, all this and that. Of course, the victor came out to be Mata Fuji. Okay, that's just, uh, what so, was uh, what was your favorite counter in the match? Well, I think what I like is how Josh was able to predict what he was about to do. Like it's like he knew exactly what moves he was going to throw at him. Mm. You know what I mean? So I don't know if he did his homework or whatever, or he just predicted it. However you want to see it, or however you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But it was great. This is the first uh, episode on uh, Access, that is, right? Yes. I DVR it anyway. <laughs> and we had a, a six-woman tag team match. We had Taya Valkyrie, who was the Knockouts champion, teaming with Madison Rain and Kyra Hogan versus Rosemary, Jordan Grace, and Alexia Nicole. Mm-hmm. Now, this match was so funny. Mm-hmm. Madison Rain and Kara Hogan were not giving the helping hand to tail Va- Valkyrie. Oh. So they just left her on the bus the entire time. What's the story behind that? Let's just say that every woman in the women's division want a piece of tail Valkyrie. Oh, okay. okay. She has the one thing all the women in that division want. That's the knockout championship? Oh, yeah. That's what it's called, right? The knockout championship? Knockout. Okay. So it was pretty interesting that... She didn't get no help from nobody. Okay. It started out with Madison Rain or Kier Hogan, you know, involved. And then once Tails is like, okay, it's all yours. <laughs> but, of course, the victory goes to Jordan Grace, Rosemary, and Alexia Nicole. Mm-hmm. Now, if you guys heard about the pay-per-view, what happened in Bound for Glory, RVD turned heel. Hell yeah. And he super kicked Rhino. Yes. So Rhino gave his explanation about... What happened? Why he did it? He's saying that he's getting sick and tired of other wrestlers stealing his moves, his material. He called out Daniel Bryan, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, those guys. And of course, he he has no apology for it, Rhino for what he did. And of course, right behind him in the hot tub, you see his wife, Katie Forbes, hot as always. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great story. But once a shocking story that I saw, like it's. An, not in the ring mm. is Sue Young. She's alive. Oh, she's no longer the undead. Mm. She now goes by Susie. <laughs> Don't ask me. The two other guys were like looking at her, like, "What is this?" It's like they're scared. But one guy saying, "Man, she is hot." 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, I would like to see where they're gonna go with this. You know, seeing now that, oh, she's no longer dead. Mm. Now she's alive. So I like that. And then we had, we had a tag team match with these Hindu guys. I never heard of them. You probably never heard of them either. Against, uh, they call themselves Desi Hit Squad. Hmm. I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, the name. I'm still gonna do more research on them. Heel. Seems like it. Uh, they faced against. Can't Willie, be a face with a Hit Squad name. No. <laughs> they faced against Willie Mack and Rick Swan. Oh. So it was a great match between those two. I was like enjoying Willie Mac. I love Willie Mac's material, how he is, you know, especially when I got into him on uh, Lucha Underground, mm. which was great. And of course, Rick Swan being Rick Swan that yeah. he is, you know, that that was some great match, you know. I loved it. And uh, Rick Swan's a name not to sleep on. Yeah. Uh, so the victory goes to Willie and Rick on this one. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome ma a match. And then we had. Eddie Edwards versus the the new the new, uh, the new and current X Division champion Ace Austin. Oh, okay. It was like a hardcore match. Tables, ladders, all the good stuff, all the toys you can find. Of course, Ace Austin got help from his new friends, the Re uh, Reno Scum. The Reno Scum. Yeah. Ooh, is this a tag team or a stable? A tag team. Okay. I don't know if they're gonna form a tag team. But we just gotta wait and see what happens. And of course, Ace Austin and, and out in backstage decided to take out Eddie Edwards' wife to dinner. Mm. I have a feeling that this is not gonna go end well for Ace Austin if he does something stupid. Where do they go for dinner? They have it. They're gonna do that uh, on the upcoming episode. Interesting. Yeah. Who takes her to a nice dinner? Well, I have a feeling he's gonna take advantage of her, uh, and Eddie's gonna whack the crap out of him with the kendo stick. Think they're gonna go to Cracker Barrel? I don't know. <laughs> we'll just see. And then the main event was for the Impact World Championship between Brian Cage and Sammy Callahan. Mm. Now Sammy could not take the loss at Bound for Glory, so he threatened Brian Cage to give him another tie shot, or his daughter's gonna get it. Oh, okay. So basically, he got to his head, and it was a brutal match, basically. Cage had no intent of getting out. Or like, there's two ways to win in this match: either pinfall submission mm -hmm. or get out of the cage. Ah, oh, okay. But Brian Cage had no intentions to get out. Mm. He wanted to brutalize him. Oh yeah. But of course, right in the end, Sammy pile drive them through the table. Ooh. And Sammy won the title. Like he all he felt all happy. But the biggest shocker was Tessa Blanchard. Who has unfinished yeah. business with Sammy? You know, so that's a pretty good ending because we have seen women that take in WWE that taken a title like that's mostly held by men. Mm -hmm. We've seen China with the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. We've seen that Terry Runnels, Dusty Rhodes' ex-wife, with the Hardcore title. Mm -hmm. But we never seen this. If they're going to go with that angle with Tessa becoming the first ever uh, champion, female to win a world champion, that's going to be a killer uh, match. Oh, yeah. So, I can't wait to see what's going to happen this coming episode on Impact. So, is this something you really want to see mm. now that they're on Access TV? Impact? I don't know. Like, for me, like, I already have a lot on my table. With like a whole bunch of different promotions to watch. Now I just got into Fist Combat, so now that's another one. I'm like, God damn, all the re it's like there's a lot of wrestling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, but Impact's now yeah. making a name for themselves. Yeah. You know, they don't need to worry about the other promotions. They're more worried, uh, yeah. more focused on themselves, what they can bring onto the table. I mean, like now that I know the players, I'll 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 be catching their 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 big pay per views. Like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll try to catch that, but like. As, as, as far as watching like an every week show, like I don't know about that. Well, I'll let you know who's gonna be on the card. There we go. That way we keep in track on who, what are the more important matches Most involving Impact. Yeah. So if you guys like to see more of the Impact, you can try to find it. If you can, go on Impact Plus, subscribe or whatever. So 
that's it for right now with this segment with Impact Wrestling. Let's just keep on moving with the show. All right, so we just had a little problem here. It's not Nico's fault. He just forgot. We did not have enough power to continue shooting, but we'll make it up for everyone next week. So am I right? Yeah. So there's a few. Th there was one thing I wanted to talk about, but we'll save that for later. And of course, um, I think we're gonna have a discussion next week about Lucha Libre. So this is gonna be part one of this, and the second part is gonna be a very special discussion, right? Or a special video for all of you wrestling fans, or should I say, Lucha Libre fans out there. So you just gotta wait and see what we have uh, surprises. But I hope you guys know. I'm still working on getting some wrestlers to be interviewed. I got a few on my list. I'm still waiting back on one who is currently waiting on his uh, response for his uh, bookings because you know how that is. You know, I can't have them coming in a day before their bookings. It's bad ju juju on my part. So, uh, Nico, is there anything you want to add? Check out Fist Combat. Oh, yeah. If, if you guys want to know, this is a 21 and up event. Mm -hmm. So, basically, you have to be 21 and up to go. No children are along. Because this is a different type of event. Because we just interviewed last week uh, the guy who runs it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mikey Gordon, but he goes as Dirty Ron McDonald. Yeah, you're probably wondering well, that. Is he related to Ron McDonald? Think of him as his crack cousin. <laughs> <laughs> or something. You know? And you gotta check out Danny Lime Danny Limelight. Oh yeah. If you don't already hear him. I have he has I just barely heard of him. Like I had I fire. he actually I he was on the on one of my recent episodes where I interviewed him for his post match. Uh huh. He I don't know which episode, so go back to that. So you know who he is. He's great. He's a real life Spider Man. He and he does dress up as Spider Man on for uh, birthday parties. Oh shit, that's what's up. Yeah, you just got to email him for that. Mm. So, uh, follow Danny Lonelight since he doesn't. He just got to him already. Mm. And also check out Fist Combat. They do have a YouTube channel for that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys have your own YouTube channel and you want to subscribe, subscribe to Fist Combat. So, subscribe, click like, whatever videos you like. They do... They haven't, they haven't shown in the, the latest one from the last The latest? Wednesday. No, not yet. Did That's he say cool. when they're going to upload that? I'm not sure. Well, just keep an eye on that one because I hope they put in where we're going to say this. Dirty Ron just proposed to his girlfriend who was part of the show. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. He was. And I saw it on Twitter, you know, and I did tell him on the messenger saying congratulations, you know. Mm -hmm. Hope we're invited for the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, he did say he's a double champion. He's a the triple X champion. Triple X champion and then whatever the champion Austin Idol used to have. <laughs> yeah, so they, the top champion, in case. So as for now, we just will let you guys know what's going to happen for next week. So like I said, we got some more things we're going to talk about. Of course, we're going to do a discussion on Lucha Libre 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Part 2, that's a special episode for that one. So on behalf of myself, J-Rod. Nico. We must bid all of you adieu so... Goodbye. Mm -hmm. And we'll all see you later. And goodbye. Bang.